the channel. So you'll notice Polestar in box, that usually means that we've got an unboxing to do. However, today it isn't actually fish. It's actually some corals for my Nano Saltwater Aquarium. So I actually went onto the G Marine website to purchase some dry goods for the aquarium, primarily being some calcium supplements. And whilst I was there, I thought we could pick up a sneaky coral or two and ended up getting five. So um, in today's video, I wanted to show you all the amazing corals that I ended up getting because the Nano Reef Tank does have corals and I've had some corals in there for quite a while, but I haven't added anything new recently. And I just thought, you know, maybe we can fill up some of those blank spots with some more corals. And I did have a few that were on my bucket list or sort of list of corals that I wanted to get. So when they were in stock, I thought, you know, we may as well bite the bullet and get some. So today I wanted to show you the corals I ended up getting. But before we get into that video, as always, let's acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the land I'm filming on, the land that you're watching this video on, and the really amazing people who are managing our land at the moment, like our councils, our frontline workers, everyone amazing like that. So without further ado, let's open up these corals and see what I ended up getting. To start off the coral hall, the first coral I ended up getting is this beautiful barcode trachophilia. It looks absolutely out of this world, quite literally, with these matrix type patterns and it just looks beautiful. I love trackies just because of how easy they are to take care of and also that big fleshy look they have and I'd say they're probably my second favourite coral just because of how versatile they are, how easy they are and just how amazing they look. Coral number two is this branching Sunularia, also known as a leather or tree coral. And I'd say this is like a cheat way or an easy way of keeping something similar to an Acropora in your aquarium. Because it looks like a full blown Acropora colony, it's easy to take care of, very beginner friendly, and it still has that swaying motion that LPS and soft corals tend to have. So I kind of see it like the best of both worlds. It really fills up a lot of space and it's just super easy to take care of, which is why I wanted to add it to the Nano Reef. Coral number three, wait, no, I should say corals number three, because there's multiple polyps, is this rock of zoanthids. It was actually one big rock when it arrives, and I did split it into two and create this really long line against the left side of the aquarium. Zoas, I'd say, are probably not one of my most favorite corals. However, they were one that I did want to try out and just test to see how well they would grow. And so far, they've actually been doing really amazing and spreading quite well in the aquarium as well. So there are three different color variations, one being like a scrambled egg type zoa. There's one which is more of a toxic green. And right up the back, you'll notice an orange zoanthid, which is I'm most excited about to try and grow. But all of these zoas are cool nonetheless and this beautiful piece of live rock does have different types of macroalgaes and things which just add a lot of biodiversity to the tank so I'm super stoked about that. The next coral, oh wait that was nice, the little zoom out defocus, um, but this coral is a fungia also known as a plate coral. These are really cool because they're sort of like a mushroom coral and something like a scully mixed together. They have these little like extensions which make them look really cool in terms of their texture and they have these like stripes going down the body. I was expecting this coral to be kind of flat but it's more dome shaped which is something that surprised me and he's a little bit retracted because I did move him around a little bit just to get the positioning right before I started filming this but this is the only coral I've named in the tank and I'm named it avocado because it has very avocado looking colors and when you look at it from top down it actually has like a yellow middle bit and then it like pans out into green or like gradients out but um, a very cool coral and something I just wanted to add to the sand bed because the sand bed was looking quite empty and just looks beautiful as well. The final coral of this haul is actually a small frag of Acropora. Now, when I got the Sinularia, I knew that it was a bit of a cheat and I had to get the legit thing. And so I did end up getting this little beginner frag of Acropora. It doesn't have the best colors, I'll admit, a bit more brown. And it's got these green polyps, which does make it look pretty cool. 
and it's just something I wanted to test out to see if this aquarium is mature enough for Acropora because if it is I know that I can add more colors different types and that's something I'm quite excited about as well so it's doing well so far and it's been almost a month since I got all of these corals it's actually growing and encrusting pretty well on the frag as you'll see so I'm super stoked about that and it's really elevated the confidence I've got with maintaining a reef aquarium in general so super happy with it and yeah I'm like very excited that I can elevate my reef keeping to SPS as well. Alrighty Bodgies and Wedgies, I really hope you enjoyed that coral unboxing video. I was super happy with how this video turned out and if you enjoyed the format and the way it was presented, feel free to give this video a big thumbs up and let me know in the comment section down below and maybe consider subscribing. I will have another saltwater coral unboxing video later this week with one of my biggest bucket list corals which I was finally able to get and um, yeah, super excited to share that with you as well. So for more coral videos, once again, subscribe but as always, stay Stay happy, stay safe, stay as Australian, Bodgy out.